Hi, it's Emily. Today I'm going to answer some of your questions. So let's start with the first question. I would say hand pain, like someone else said, not only do I have arthritis, but I find myself gripping the keys too hard because I can't find a hand position that allows me to balance the flute so it's steady and have all my fingers move freely. It's a constant struggle. I don't recall it being this hard 30 years ago when I played as a teenager. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe 30 years ago you didn't have arthritis, um, you know, but uh, there are different things that you can do. First, remember that the rods are very heavy, so they make, well, very, they're heavier than the rest, so they make the flute uh, rock back. So you can try to make, to put the rods a little bit more, um, more on the top and bring your head joint a little bit more in. That might help balance it. If you're not comfortable like that, you can also try a thumb port. You put it here and it rests on your thumb so the flute doesn't rock back anymore and I have a student who have arthritis who has our arthritis as well she also has a bebop here that kind of guides her um, left index finger in the right spot and she also wears a brace for her wrist and it helps while she plays so you know you can find ways like that but remember you have three fulcrum points, you have your jaw, you have your left index finger here that's curled under the, the key where you put your index finger, and then you have your thumb. If you have a thumb port, it's easy, you just have it rest there. If not, you can just push forward. You don't put it completely under or the flute will always rock back. You push a little bit forward, like I put it not exactly in the back, not exactly under, like 45 degree going like that. And don't push too hard on your jaw because you'll also hurt your jaw. Just put as much pressure as needed, not more. It's not that much pressure to just hold the flute like you're locking it in. And your moving fingers should not be holding the flute. So see if there's any little gadgets like that that can help you uh, because you want to play without pain and have fun. So I hope this helps. Now, second question. I can switch from my normal octave to a higher one with effort, but shifting down an octave is something I've yet to be able to do. Okay, you can work on scales. You pick your scale that you're working on for that week, let's say, and you transform it into an octave scale. So you add an exercise to your routine. Let's say you're playing a G major scale, do it like this. And so on and so on you go back down um, because you have to work on it you know but the thing is um, make sure you understand how you reach each octave in the lower register you use warm air which is um, slower air so you can do it in your hand <sighs> slow and in the high register you use faster air which is cold <sighs> okay so you can try it on your hand and even the angle changes. And it's the same that you do in your flute. The angle changes low and high. And you can use your jaw a little bit low and high. Low, high. So you use the air speed with your muscles here and a little bit of the movement here. The up, upper lip doesn't need to move. And you just... And don't be scared to try. When you get it, try to really remember how you did it. When you don't, try to remember too so that you go check somewhere else, you know. It's not just about how much you practice, but how smart you practice. So you have to really try to um, remember how to do things and uh, look for answers. And um, don't stop blowing. Sometimes when we uh, do things that we're scared of, we stop blowing. You can't stop blowing and play the flute, so you have to blow. And you can use that trick too. Put your hand on your belly and go from low to high, ah, and then high to low, ah, and see which muscles you're using and do the same in your flute to switch octave. 
So you, you go from fast air to slow air when you want to go down. So I hope this helps. Third question. Playing loud but nice enough to be heard over trombones and trumpets and clarinets in band where there's only two flutes. Okay, you have to be realistic. Um, if you have trombones, trumpets, clarinets in band, especially if it's a beginner band, usually in a beginner band, those instruments tend to uh, overblow a lot and play very loud. And the flute has kind of the opposite problem because we lose a lot of air. Um, so you might not be able to uh, overpower that many instruments. But if you want to play louder, you need to use, um, you need to first make sure you're not covering the hole too much. Okay, so make sure that you don't cover your hole here more than a third to a quarter with your lower lip and that you're not bringing your upper lip forward to cover because if you do this properly here but then your upper lip goes forward then you're still covering so you're not getting the result that you want. This has to be quite open if you want a good sound. Then you need to use support and you can use um, your head a little bit as a resonator you know like like singers do so and you can use different vowels when you play like ah uh, if you want to play loud open in the mouth as well and a lot of support so that you control your airspeed and keep that really open you'll have a bigger sound if you try to have the perfect little sound with no air at all you'll tend to cover the hole more and get a little sound that doesn't project it sounds good for you very close to your ear but it doesn't play loud so try not to do that so I hope that helps. And now, fourth question. Breathing, air support, tension when I'm nervous, hands tight and a little sweaty and shoulders close in. Okay, like this, I guess, to protect yourself. Vibrato, rhythm, maintaining a practice schedule. Okay, maybe you have too many uh, goals at once. Try to pick one or two goals uh, because you're gonna overwhelm yourself, okay? And um, yeah, try to tackle a couple of things. Then you get better at those things, go to something else, you know. Let's say breathing, you can do breathing exercises. You can uh, breathe in and then play a note for as long as you can. Do that two, three times in a row when you practice. Write down how many seconds and do that again another day. That can be an exercise that you do. Or you can do an exercise in bed where you try to um, make your breathing a bit slower where you count let's say you breathe in four you hold four you breathe out four you hold four that can be there's a lot of good breathing exercises and now air support it's all about here so put your hand here and do the sound and you'll feel the muscles there those muscles are the muscles that i use the most when i play to make sure that i use those but there's also the whole muscles around the rib cage. And air support is not just about the whole breathing and supporting. It's not just, you. we focus a lot on, on breathing in, but it's also about keeping the air in and pushing it out at the speed that we decide. So it's like, and then those, those ribs have to stay, when you breathe in, they go a bit apart and they have to stay apart. You don't want to deflate like a balloon, like that. You want to, control that speed so you can work on that too you can put your metronome at 60 take two seconds to breathe in then you breathe out two two seconds let's say two seconds breathe in four seconds breathe out and you do that two seconds breathe in six seconds and then you you make it longer and longer so you learn to breathe in with always the same amount of time but you always make the breathing out a bit longer when you go get good with it you can do uh, bigger numbers like you breathe out five, breathe in two, breathe out ten, breathe in two, play fifteen, and so on and so on. I have a video where I give a lot of breathing exercises. You can check it out. And then tension when I'm nervous. That's normal. You can also think maybe you're excited, and maybe you don't try to fight it too much. 
breathing can help with that too. Sometimes when I'm very nervous, I take a breath in and I hold it in a little bit. And uh, let's say 20 seconds. It slows my heart down because when we're nervous, our heart gets faster and then everything gets faster. Our breathing gets faster. So by doing that, it calms the heart down and it kind of calms everything else. So I go, hold it in, then go. And I do it maybe two, three times and I, I breathe slowly. And um, you can do some visualization to prepare for stuff. And um, also with time, you get used to playing in front of people and you get less nervous about it. It's normal to be nervous about something that you're not used to do. So you have to give yourself a break. Um, vibrato. So yeah, same thing. You can work on it. Make sure you don't do it with your throat. You don't go like that. Uh, it's better when you start vibrating to do it slowly and relaxed then try to go fast and have this throat thing so start slowly and then try to increase the speed so i i set a speed I set a pulse and then I go one and then two vibrations per beat and then three and four and five. Um, but as I said, the first thing is not to get that <laughs> thing. So maybe slow your vibrato down. That might be something. Then rhythm. Well, rhythm, make sure that you always keep a steady pulse and you always refer to the pulse. And maintaining a, a practice schedule. You know, it... Um, Maybe sometimes some of my students, I tell them, try to put, uh, make a schedule on a weekly schedule. It doesn't have to be every day at the same time because it's not easy for everyone to do that. And set a um, realistic goal. Because if you put, if you set unrealistic goals for yourself, you always feel uh, uh, a little bit unhappy and not proud of yourself. And that's not what you want. So... Some people bring their flutes to work and do a little bit at lunchtime or something like that. Like, I don't know, but maybe maybe you think you need to practice an hour a day and maybe you still really need to, with 30 minutes, you could get way better. Maybe also it's about how smart you practice. Like I said before, there's the whole idea of being aware of what you're doing and being in a research mode instead of just repeating emotion. So that's that. So I hope this helps. Next question, finding opportunities to perform as an adult. I'm not a professional. To stay motivated and gain confidence, I would love some advice on finding opportunities to perform in front of others. Okay, I know that there are some groups online. I have a student who does concerts with friends online. Um, there are a lot of um, bands for non-professional adults. If you don't know in your area, maybe go in a music store around where you live. Usually these people repair instruments for a lot of band people in high schools. And, and so they would know about uh, bands in your area, bands or orchestras, uh, also churches. I have students who play at their church where they go. Um, there's a lot of different things. There's even some organizations that uh, do little auditions for you and then they put people that have the same level together to do chamber music. So that's some stuff you could do, but maybe research in your area. But sometimes um, music uh, shops can know a little bit about that. When you go to get your flute repaired, maybe ask a couple of questions. Next question, maintaining the air support while articulating. Okay, so that's a good one. In a way, you already um, you already answered your question. You need to work on that, but maybe you don't know how. So what you can do um, is pick a phrase. Let's say, uh, we'll just play a scale. And then you play it all slurred first with the air support. Just a G major scale. And then you keep that same air support, but you add the tongue. With the same air support. 
Another exercise that I like is just going down every semitone from the high C, the second octave C and tonguing. That's single tonguing and then I do double and then triple or sometimes I do six times each note. What I like about that is because it's not really in the fingers, I really focus on supporting and tonguing because there's not that much movement in the fingers. So that's a good exercise you could try. And then when you have a passage in a piece, play it, play it uh, slurred once and focus on, the, um, focus on the support and then keep that same support and add the tongue. So I hope that helps. And now next question. My biggest problem is keeping consistent practice. Hard to balance it with work and studies, so I'm constantly struggling with right lip embouchure and breathing as well as I, as utilizing the speed of my tonguing to my fingers. Oh like unite oh yeah, like making it a unity, yeah. But it's all linked to consistent practice, so I can hardly complain. Yeah, yes and no, because like like I said before, if you're really aware of how you do things, you're going to get better. It's not just about how much time you put in, okay? It's, yes, of course you need a little bit of time, but uh, it's a lot about how aware of what you're doing. So, um, maybe set a little bit more um, in terms of times, realistic goals. And then don't practice the stuff that you're really good at. If you don't have a lot of time, maybe practice the stuff that you're uh, struggling more with. So let's say you say using putting the tongue and the fingers together, then maybe practice um, either areas in your... You can choose, let's say you're playing a piece. You can say, okay, this piece, I don't have that much time to do sound exercises and technique and all that. So you could just choose your piece that you're learning and be like, this phrase could be used as a sound exercise. This, this area could be used as an articulation exercise. And this could be, so you can use your piece to make it, um, to make your exercises. So that's one thing you can do. But if you wanna really make, um, exercises, let's say on tonguing, the exercise that I just gave is pretty good. You start with that. Then once your tonguing is very comfortable, you can just practice. I don't know if it's double tonguing, single tonguing, but practice scales uh, with tonguing every note. Do it slowly to begin because sometimes you just want to go fast, 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 but do it once slow and once fast. Okay. So this way you, you kind of get the mo motion and then you push yourself to do it faster. And the lip embouchure, Okay, it shouldn't be too complicated. You go like this, put your flute, don't smile and blow in pretty much in front, little angle like that, you know? And then it's all about supporting and the whole breathing thing, make sure you breathe in 3D. You go front, side and back, you know? The whole area gets wider and then you don't do like a balloon that like that, you stay open and then you have air to do very very long phrases so breathing can also be worked on while you're driving while you're doing other stuff because you can work on that type of uh, breathing in and then pushing out slowly uh, when you're doing other stuff like the dishes or whatever so yeah same with tonguing you can go or or so sometimes you can use downtime like that and also by listening to music, listening to some flute sounds so that you have uh, something to aim for and other instruments as well and listening to the pieces that you're learning. Also recording yourself and you can listen to yourself after but this way you know, oh, that sounds good. Oh, that I have to work on. That can be a good way to use your time and get better because it's not just about punching. It's not uh, punching and getting the clock, you know, it's about practicing smart. I really liked answering your questions. If you have any more of them, you can leave them down below and I'll try to make another video like this. 
I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and go and check out our website, musigy.com, for our courses, sheet music and music. Thanks for watching.